Good evening. Buonasera. Good. Buonasera. I'm so sorry I can't be there with you guys. I really wish I was there, but unfortunately, I have coronavirus. Yes, we, we, we know about the situation, of course. We are trying to handle the situation in Italy, and I have to say that Italian people were very, uh, I mean, very serious about the situation. So thank you for staying in New York. Take care of your health. That's the most important thing. And of course, take care of others. So quarantine, that means, and I hope you will recover. I know you will recover very soon. So I will go back to the audience. I see a lot of friends here. Ooh, wow. It's a great night. So Teddy, Teddy Quinlivan is a model. You are a model, of course. And I know that I want to start how you define yourself, because that's very, I think it's a good starting point to talk about your story. So you are a model, first of all. You are a woman, and you are a transgender woman. So um, my first, my very first question is about your childhood. Um, childhood should be the place where children are able to be free, to be happy, to be themselves. And unfortunately, sometimes for special children, sp children with a diversity, it's not that place. It's a place of hurt, of pain, of loneliness. And I know that your child was full of um, bullied pe bully people, a very, yeah. uh, uh, let me say, a very dangerous father and a very toxic situation. So, looking at yourself, you are so beautiful. You really shine and uh, you are enlightening the fashion panorama since a lot of time. So, but how was emancipating yourself from that situation? How much did it cost to you? Well, first of all, let me say thank you so much um, to everybody who organized this event for allowing me to speak. I really wish I could be there right now to be a part of the beauty and joy of such an incredible event with all of you. But to answer your question, um, when I was younger, I had no concept of what being transgender even was. I didn't even have the language to articulate the way that I was feeling. So I just felt like I knew I was in the wrong body. I knew that people were calling me he, people were insisting I was a boy, and I just knew that wasn't true. Um, and I didn't know when I was going to be able to live, my, live as my authentic self. So um, I went through most of my time as a child really just trying to conform to what my parents wanted what the kids at my school wanted, what my teachers wanted, what society wanted me to be, because I didn't want to disappoint anybody. I wanted to stay safe because there were a lot of threats of violence against me. And um, I wanted to just feel like a normal person. Um, but then as I got older, I started to realize that the fact that I was a woman was undeniable. Um, even every, people in my life knew that I was transgender before even I had the language to articulate that I was transgender. So when I was 16 years old, I, um, after sneaking out at night because I felt unsafe to walk around in my own town during the day, my mom caught me sneaking out. And I admitted to her that I was, felt like a girl trapped inside of a boy's body and that my spirit and my soul and my, enti my entire mental psychology was female. And I think to my mom at this point, it was just un an undeniable fact as well. So we started to take a lot of steps to make sure that I was able to transition and become the woman that I wanted to be. I started taking hormones. Um, I changed schools. I changed my name. And then that sort of became the the starting point of my new life as Teddy Quinlevin, 
not the boy anymore, but Teddy can live in the woman. So um, I felt finally like I could be free and be myself. And then I turned 18 years old and I moved to Paris and started modeling um, in a more serious way than I was back home. Um, and then my career took off. And when I started modeling, people didn't know that I was transgender. And it was yeah. something that I concealed from everybody because I felt like it was so important for me to, um, in order to be successful, I felt like I had to hide my true identity. And that was one of the most painful things and the most, one of the most difficult things I've ever had to go through. So for me, um, in the fall of 2017, when I came out publicly as transgender, um, after years and years of modeling and walking dozens and dozens of fashion shows without people knowing I was trans, um, I felt like it was an important time to take a stand and to be honest and to be real with the world about who I truly was. So I came out publicly in the fall of 2017 in the middle of Fashion Week, the morning of Marc Jacobs. <laughs> And um, in a CNN article, and that article just exploded. It went viral, which was amazing. And then I was finally free to not just be living as a woman, but to live publicly as a trans woman. And so my entire life changed and the dynamics of my life changed. But for me, it became this really liberating and empowering thing. It went from being this secret that I felt like I needed to conceal um, something I was in denial of, something that I was ashamed of, to being something that I could use as a tool to change people's hearts and minds, and also to prove to the world that transgender women aren't exactly what you see in media. They're not always, they're not always going to be the, uh, the negative stereotype that you see in the fashion industry um, or in, in, in movies or in television. It's a, a transgender woman could be just a woman that you see walking down the street who's beautiful a woman at a restaurant having coffee and you might not even know a woman on a cover of a magazine um and so for me by sharing my story i was able to liberate myself and to free myself and to emancipate myself from the confines of society telling me what i should be i had been listening and i had listened i had been listening to society i'd been following the rules for so many years trying to just be normal whatever that's supposed to mean. And then finally, I was able to be myself. And I was amazed at, that I was at a, we were at a place in the world where people were ready with open arms to accept that, especially in our industry, because our industry is about taste making. It's about media. It's about, um, it's about what's considered desirable, what's considered aspirational. When you see somebody on the cover of a magazine, it's it's the fashion industry telling the world, this is what's beautiful. This is what's aspirational. This is um, something to desire to be. And so for me to be in a situation where I could be walking Louis Vuitton and Prada and Miu Miu um, and Marc Jacobs and Valentino and all these incredible shows and um, also be accepted for who I was, was I think in a way a turning point for, for in the transgender movement because it really showed that we are truly capable of anything. And I'm, and I wasn't the first, there was Leah T before me. There was Tracy Africa before me. Um, there were, there was Connie Fleming. There were so many incredible transgender models who came before me, but I felt like they never really were able to get the, the recognition that they deserved for being the first because the world wasn't ready for them. So I'm so grateful that I came out during a time where it was possible to be accepted so openly, even if there were a lot of people, of course, who um, disagree with my lifestyle or the, or my identity. There will always be people who are not, I mean, in our, uh, who doesn't understand our choices, but you were mentioning a word normal and being normal which is very useless nowadays. And uh, you also said that you decided to reveal your transition because of the political climate that you were surrounded of. And I'm thinking about the Trump era, of course. And yes. what we are seeing today, and today we are talking about diversity and inclusion, we, 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 we are looking at two very different strengths. One is 
pushing us forward very fast. And it's very progressive and it's very helpful for everybody. And the other one, it's the opposite. So it's not only bringing us back in the past, but it's very violent. And, uh, and with, with a lot of hungriness in, into it. So what do you think about this world that is so still separate and is so still, uh, um, so, so not able to understand diversity and where we are going? And if you have to give a very, only one answer, what's your suggestion to the people who don't understand the new wave? Um, well, we're living in a very, very uh, fast paced moving society where technology is changing at such an incredibly fast rate, it's difficult to keep up with. Um, but also culture is at the same time as well with the internet being kind of like the liberation of and the democratization of information people now have access to stories that they never had access to before um they have access to information that they never had access to before without the internet i would have never known that i would have never had the language to describe being transgender um so for me, uh, I think that it's very difficult for things to move so fast and for people to understand these concepts and in the, in, in the complexity of them. Being transgender is a very difficult thing to understand unless you have met a transgender person and they've explained it to you one-on-one, -on -one. Um, especially for somebody who doesn't feel like they have any a uh, question of their gender identity. They feel steadfast in who they are and they know who they are. So it definitely um, makes things really challenging for people to understand. But I think that my suggestion to anybody who is, uh, who doesn't understand these concepts, whether it's about transgender issues or racial issues or LGBTQ issues in, in general, um, it's so important that we use our brains and have conversations that are meaningful and take the time to meet somebody who's transgender, take the time to, um, put yourself out there and get to know this thing that you might have issues with, or that you might not understand, or that's too complex for you. Um, cause I, once you meet a transgender person or you meet somebody who's different than you, then you can recognize their humanity. Um, and at the end of the day, whether you think that I'm authentically a woman or not, hopefully anybody who has a conversation with me can walk away at least having respect for me as a person. Um, and that's really important. And that's also what helps to change hearts and minds as well. So it's like, we have this amazing um system which is the internet to be able to access all this information to, and to be able to access all of these stories if you don't have access to a transgender person to learn um about their journey and their struggle i would suggest watching a youtube video um reading an article little things like that can help you to understand um and it's it's just it's going to be a difficult concept for people to understand, but we're making a lot of progress. And I think the reason why people are so polarized right now is because um, besides it's just a difficult thing to understand, it's just the issue of being transgender, for example, has become incredibly politicized. So now there's like a political spin, a political narrative um, on something that really shouldn't be political in the first place. For me, being transgender is a psychological medical condition that I have no control over. I was going to be transgender whether I wanted to be or not. I had no choice in the matter, just like people who are um, homosexual don't have a choice in who they choose to love or people of a different race don't have a choice in their skin color. So I think just understanding that this is just who we are and um, it's not a choice. It's not a lifestyle. It's a part of our identity. And it's also 
not something to it's not something to fear it's something to understand and embrace you can feel one way you can feel negatively about it or you can feel positively about it but at the end of the day it's an undeniable fact of life that transgender people exist we're here we're not going anywhere so it's like why fight it why not just use your whatever intellect you have or whatever brain power you have to better understand because it will make you a lot less mad if you just understand what it is. Yeah. Um, so that that's my answer. Thank you, Teddy. Our time is almost over, but I want to touch the last point. I think one of the most important points is the language. Uh, yeah. Language, it's really our <laughs> way to understand and to accept the change. So uh, when you were talking about yourself, I think that nowadays one of the most important thing is, how, how, how can I put it? You know that in Italy, some of the most important actors, I'm running Vanity Fair and I know most of them, sometimes they are very focused on themselves. And sometimes when they see you, they don't say, hello, how are you? But they say, hello, how am I? And I mean, this is a, I'm saying this in order to let people understand that we need to ask and listen before talk about ourselves. So when we are in front of a person that is different from ourselves, maybe the first thing is to ask, to be curious, and to say, how do you want to be defined? How can I define you? And then listen. That's very important because at the end of the day, we are really changing the way we are looking at diversity and our society too. And it's a political thing. It's not only a psychological thing, it's really political. And at the end of the day, we need to, I mean, listen and ask. That's very important and then change. So uh, that's, this is my, my, my last question. Um, what do you do when someone refers to you in the wrong way? How do you correct him, her, or what else? And how do you help him or her or what else to be part of the change? So this is a good question. And this is a debate that is very highly... Um, very highly polarizing in the United States, and I'm sure uh, as well in Europe now too. Um, but uh, especially when it comes to the use of pronouns and things like that, uh, whether we call people he or she or they or them, um, that's a very widely debated topic. Uh, for me personally, if someone were to the term in the, the, the term in America is misgender. So if somebody were to call me he instead of she, I would first of all ask, do you have eyeballs? Because um, I'm, I think I present pretty female. I think that it's reasonable to assume somebody's gender identity based off of their, based off of the way that they look. So if I come up to you and I'm wearing a dress and makeup and high heels, um, I would assume that they would just think I was female, but if somebody was to intentionally misgender me to be malicious or because they just plainly didn't know, um, I think that one, one thing to do is to pull them aside and to correct them and to have that conversation, but also to, to people out there who are transgender, who feel like this is a really big deal. Um, you might not like my answer, but my answer is that your identity is the most important thing to yourself. So I know I'm a woman. I know who I am. And it doesn't matter if somebody calls me he. It doesn't really matter to me if somebody misgenders me because I know who I am and my, the people who love me and respect me will love and respect my gender identity. And the idea that everybody is going to love and respect my gender identity and know immediately what I would like to be referred to as is just crazy. Um, especially for people who are non-binary and look, it, it's very difficult when you meet them to see if they're presenting as male or female and you don't really know what to call them. And I know in Italy, 
everything is gendered. Um, all of your language is gendered there. So it must be even more challenging um, in Italy, for example, or France um, or Spain. So I think that to somebody who is uh, trans, I think you need to just understand that your pronouns aren't what define you. If somebody misgenders you and calls you he or she or whatever is wrong, uh, you need to just be able to understand that within yourself who you are and that's the most important thing um if you're going to expect to change everybody's mind and make people and pull people over to your side it's crazy and it's not even worth spending the energy fighting about or debating about in my opinion um but to somebody who might just accidentally misgender you or accidentally use the wrong pronouns um i think it's just important to have that conversation with them to be direct, you don't have to do it in front of everybody at a party, for example, and embarrass them. But um, if you want people to respect you, you have to educate them. You have to give them the opportunity to learn about why that's important or who you are. And I, most people just want to go along to get along. Most people just want to be respectful. Um, I would respect anybody else's pronouns just to be respectful um, because it's just not worth the fight. <laughs> Like there are more important things in the world than pronouns and your gender identity should be more than just what people call you. Your gender identity is within yourself. It's important to you. And that's not something that, that's not something that should or can be, or can be uh, identified for any other people. And I think the people that hyper focus on pronouns are missing the point completely about what it means to have this human experience that is, being the gender that you are trans transgenderism being a transgender person isn't defined by the pronouns that you use it's defined by the way that you live your life and the way that you carry yourself and the way that you feel on the inside it's not defined by what people call you very clear Teddy, thank you very much for your help for your um, talk in this very important day for us and this important event I want also uh, to say thank for your strength because being a pioneer and you've been a pioneer and for speaking out in that moment it was not easy was really important so keep on being a pioneer for all of us keep on shining like you are doing today uh, I mean get health and very 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 soon um, and thank you again for being with us tonight. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Grazie mille. And I hope to see you at the next fashion shows in Milano. Yes, I Cross can't Cross fingers. Wait. Fingers okay. are crossed. Bye. Ciao, bye ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao.